Hello, um, this is a very quick demonstration uh, looking at three of the uh, flute libraries that are currently available. Um, we've got um, three legato articulations loaded up on the screen. Um, the first is the Cinewind Core um, Flute True Legato. Uh, the second is the first flute legato from Berlin Woodwinds. And the third is the Claire Flute Legato Lyrical. Um, these are three very different libraries. Um, obviously, Cinewinds, the flute from Cinewinds, is part of a much bigger core library, uh, including all sorts of other um, wind instruments. Um, the flutes are particularly nice. There is just one flute legato patch and a number of flute articulation patches, including um, the usual um, trills and staccato and st staccatissimo and things like that. Um, the first flute legato, Berlin Woodwinds, is the legato patch, but again with Berlin Woodwinds you end up with some articulations including um, staccato and, and, and trills and all sorts of things. And then the last one, the Claire flute, um, this is the lyrical version and we've got some natural, medium, strong, uh, sustained crossfade staccato and marcato patches all within a single um, instrument. So you can just load up the one instrument and get all of the articulations. And we'll look very briefly at those, although this, this little demonstration is not designed to look at the articulations, just the legato patch. So let's just start with doing some playing. Um, things to note is the Cinewinds core instrument has a number of controllers. Um, most importantly is CC1, which is the dynamics, and CC2, which is a vibrato. We'll have a little play with that and just see what's going on. The first thing to note really with Cinewinds as well is there's no way of knowing on the screen as to where you are in terms of dynamics and vibrato. Um, there's no visual feedback at all. Um, if I move the modulation lever, you can see that Cubase is telling me that the modulation lever is moving. Well, it's telling me that something's moving, and down here you can see CC1 is moving. Um, and if I dial up CC2, which is the breath controller, you can see Cubase is telling me it's going up and down again, but nothing in the Cinewinds core uh, window and contact tells me that, so it's a bit bit frustrating. So let's turn the vibrato on and just play some uh, some lines now on the uh, on the flute. So on the face of it, it's it's quite a nice little flute. Um, I wasn't taking away any of the vibrato, and I was just using the dynamic control. But I'm going to do a quick demo now. I don't need to speak over it because you'll hear it. I'm going to turn on and off the vibrato uh, mid note, and you can see what you think of that. So you can see or hear there that the um, Cinewinds core flute sounds lovely with vibrato. Take the vibrato off and it stinks. Um, uh, it just sounds horrible um, with that, that, that change between vibrato and non-vibrato. Uh, and then you've got the option of turning it back on again. Interestingly, when you bring vibrato in, it sounds really nice. Um, but taking it away just sounds uh, pretty lame. So we'll, um, we'll move on from the uh, Cinewinds core flute legato now. And we'll move on to the uh, Berlin Woodwinds flute, so I'm just going to solo the Berlin Woodwinds. Um, this again has a um, control one for controlling the uh, crossfading dynamics and control change two as I've set it up here is to choose between these three articulations normal vibrato, without vibrato and progressive vibrato. The problem with this patch uh, with all the Berlin Woodwinds patches is you can't bring vibrato in and out. It's either there or it's not there. Um, with the B release, I think it is, um, you've got some progressive vibrato flutes that are velocity sensitive, so the harder you hit them, the quicker the velocity comes in, um, which is quite useful. Um, but for, for this one, we're using the standard library. Um, <clears throat> and you can see that uh, the normal vibrato, I can choose crossfading, and the same with the other. Um, so we'll just play with normal vibrato using the uh, dynamic crossfading. I'll play a similar kind of melody in the similar range.
The one thing that uh, this woodwind library has is the dynamic range is pretty good. So I'll just play a note from the bottom to the top. Um, something of note is that the Berlin woodwinds have great dynamics. The Cine wind uh, has pretty lame, pretty poor dynamic really. The range is not very good. So let's just try um, that with the full range. See, that sounds very nice. Um, so the first flute legato is the one we've chosen, and it's very, very melodic, uh, very nice to play. Um, if I just choose without vibrato now, you can hear what that sounds like. So, very nice, um, but you can't bring the vibrato back in. So as a, a compromise, they've got progressive vibrato, um, and if I just play that one. Again, a nice little sound on that one. Um, so I quite I like the Berlin Woodwinds. It has a nice little uh, tone to it. Um, you can do long notes and it sounds quite convincing over time. Um, the last library we've got here is the Clare um, Woodwind Library. Clare, of, um, this is 8DO, I've just brought out this Clare Virtuoso um, set. You can get a bassoon and a clarinet and oboe and a flute. Um, they're all legato instruments, although they have um, other articulations which are quite pleasant to play as well. So this is, as I've chosen the lyrical um, version here, and this is the natural uh, recording and again I've got dynamics you can see the feedback of the dynamics on the screen and underneath you've got the expression which is using CC2 so again now it's the Claire's turn for a little uh, showcase Something the Clare flute samples have, which the other two libraries don't have, is they have a quite a natural fall off at the end of the note. Um, I haven't quite worked out how you get longer notes and shorter notes by playing. I think it's velocity related. But essentially you can play a note and keep it sustained and the note will naturally decay as the, uh, as the flautist runs out of breath. I think it's related to the legato intervals as well. So that's quite a nice feature. You can use that to your advantage. It can be a little bit frustrating um, when you want a long sustained note and it cuts out, well, decays. Um, so that was the Clare natural uh, articulation. Um, just just to play the staccato, um, staccato or the staccatissimo here, which is absolutely beautiful. I'm just going to play a few notes. So with that articulation, the harder you play, the longer the notes are, and you can get some really great effects of that one. I quite, I quite like using that for little, little fluttery noises. Um, so those are the articulations. We're not really interested in those. We're most interested in the legato. So I think the thing to do now is to show these in context. So um, we'll just bring up the true legato um, cine winds here, uh, make sure that the dynamics are back to reset, which they are, and I've prepared this little piece here. It's using um, some strings from the um, Spitfire Audio Sable uh, string library, uh, violins and, viol and uh, cellos. And here we've just got the same passage played. It's a bit of a dull passage, but it does show some of the legato styling and some of the sustains, and also the, the range of the notes. And we go down to the C here, the bottom C, and up to a couple of octaves above that. So um, just have a listen to this. I'll put it on loop, and we'll switch between the different libraries uh, every time it's played through once. So we're starting with the flute legato from the Cinewinds Core Library.
Now the Berlin woodwinds. And now the Clare flute. So you can hear now those three libraries playing. Um, it's worth noting, of course, the dynamic range of each instrument is slightly different in terms of the control uh, change one messages. So in the Berlin woodwinds, for instance, here, if I, um, if I selected all of the dynamics here and actually essentially brought them all up a little bit so that the lowest isn't quite as low as it was and the highest is a little bit higher, um, it's probably a fairer. Um, example to show, but um, it's worth using the same for all of these uh, just as an example really, so you can see um, that uh, the libraries are very different in sound at the same dynamic range. So um, just for the sake of it, let's play all of them together, um, all three libraries uh, playing at once and see what, uh, see what heck that uh, sounds like. <laughs> 